Hey, man. Hey, man. How's it going? Good. You? Good, good. How you been doing? You keep busy? Yeah. Trying to keep busy doing small renovations around. Oh, okay. Around the house? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's cool. That's cool. Still working out? Uh, somewhat. Trying to. I have those tires. So yeah. Trying to use the tires. Weights are a little too expensive to buy. I know. You can't find them anywhere. I was trying to find them at the start of the season. I couldn't find anything. Yeah, you can actually get custom ones. Can you? They're way too expensive. Uh, hmm. Where where can you find them? You got to go, like, people make, like, concrete ones. And, like, uh, Facebook market and stuff. Oh, uh, okay, okay. All right, cool. Let's get right into this. Um, so, uh, for everyone that doesn't know, I think a lot of you know, this is Arden Selly. Um, Arden played up with the club uh, when he was 14 you. Um, was when he first started playing. Um, Arjun's done uh, numerous of um, kind of camps uh, coaching-wise um, and has played uh, in many national provincial championships as well as now competes at the University of Guelph. Um, so I guess just a brief little introduction for Arjun is um, you were 15 new national champion and that was all of Canada. Yep. Um, you won 16 new nationals um, where you were named the tournament MVP. Yep. Um, you were a 17 new Grand Prix champion. Um, and then h you obviously, your team was able to win um, Provincials and Yep. Um, so before we kind of get into your club career, I kind of want to start off with how you kind of started playing volleyball and kind of get your school volleyball background. Uh, so it started off and uh, I tried out in grade six. Uh, I actually got cut in grade six and seven both times in the first cut. And then grade eight kind of rolled around. And then Mr. Smith, Kelly, um, most of us know him as, uh, invited me to come to tryouts and then he just put me on the A team. And then once that middle school season ended, I actually ended that middle school season with the heartbreaker. Uh, we lost provincials and we came third. Right. Heartbreaking for like the first time you joined the sport. But then a few months later on Christmas, Kelly invited me out to 14 trials with the full team. And then I eventually made it. And then once I went to grade nine, I started my full year of Pac-Man. Right. Um, and then I guess uh, before we kind of jump on to your time with the club, um, given your time playing grade six and seven and eight, uh, you would have spent a lot of time obviously with Abby and Saad, right? Uh, Abby and Saad, yeah. We bo both grew up together. We all live like a kilometer away from each other. We all used to play together as kids. So we've grown up together and now we still hang out together. Yeah. And how's, how's that, how did that relationship kind of develop over like your time playing school together as well? Um, it's funny, Saad was actually in my grade six class. I moved in grade five to a new school. And in grade six, Saad was in my new class. And that's where, I'm, where I knew him at. And then eventually I became teammates with him. Right. And he became one of my friends in grade eight. And then it's been the same since. And like, how was it, I guess, um, just looking at high school back, right? Obviously, four offs of championship and then an off the silver medal for you and two offs of right? Yep. Um, so what was it like kind of sharing uh, those moments with those guys? Honestly, it's really good because you share an extra bond with them. Yeah. Uh, growing up with them, they understand you. It's almost like a second instinct. Like if I'm in a situation and I can't really say anything about it, they'll figure their situation out and then they kind of carry on with me. For sure. So um, just starting, I guess, with 15 national championship, right? When you guys won all of Canada. Um, so obviously, given you guys came second at provincials that year, right? Uh, losing to Durham. So what, like, did you guys end up playing them in the national finals there? No, we actually, they were on the other side of the bracket, I believe. Uh, we ended up playing uh, a team from Alberta. Right. And then we beat them two straight, yeah. We actually yeah. faced them into club, uh, which was the team Zander used to play for. Right. Uh, face them in the quarters, and then I'm pretty sure I beat them. Right, and then I guess to kind of win that first national championship must have felt. Yeah, uh, at least from coming from like a losing background, it was finally like we're getting a winning culture on the team, and we finally won a big. It's nice as a as a young athlete. Right, and then um, I guess moving forward then the 16 nationals. Um, it seems like your team just does better at nationals, right? Because obviously the 16 you again, you guys didn't win. Yeah, 16 was another heartbreaker. We lost in the finals. In the third set, I think 15, 13 are around that score. Right. Uh, but it seemed like my team would always gather them after a loss and go ahead uh, at Nationals. Right. And then, um, at that, again, then, so you were named tournament MVP. Um, why do you think you had so much success? Uh, one was I was really confident in my skill. And so, uh, 
my coach Jesse provided me. Uh, Jesse was one of my only coaches that I when I started and till 18 years he was the same coach. Um, I was confident in what he taught me, which helped me succeed heavily at a high standard like nationals. Right, and then I guess um, with Sarah in your setting there, um, why do you think you guys were able to have such a kind of close bond? Because obviously. Being national MVP, of course, you had to block well and stuff, but obviously you got to score the ball, right? Uh, it helps because we both played at the same high school as well, right? So we had so many touches. And aside from volleyball, we used to hang out a lot. And right. when we were really, really young, we didn't really hang out. We played when we hung out. So we played volleyball together basically all the time. Right. And then um, I guess kind of moving towards your second season, right? Um, I want to talk about nationals uh, because obviously that was a little heartbreaking. Um, but kind of just talking about Grand Prix, um, again, you guys obviously beat um, beat that Durham team, I believe, right? You guys would have in seven, can you? Uh, in the finals, we played Preds. We beat the Preds in the finals. From right. whatever. And that was your first kind of – like, obviously, you guys have won tournaments from 50 onwards, but – um, that was, like, the first kind of big tournament that you guys had won, right? Uh, it was because we all transitioned our positions. And now we're finally starting to become our position that we were newly brought into. Right. And the kind of grand prix was where we put everything together and were able to have a piece of win out. Right. And then, um, like, so let's talk about 17 provincials. Or, sorry, nationals. Um, obviously, you guys had a lot of struggles um, with injuries and stuff. Yeah, Matthew Powell rolled his ankle, and he was our middle. Uh, mm -hmm. What happened was uh, I was the left side, and they transitioned me back into the middle, and we did a weird rotation. I would play left side for one rotation and middle for two rotations, and then would go back to serve. Right. Um, and so I guess um, one thing I was told about going into that provincial or nationals was that you guys were, like, looking good, right? You, like, I don't think there was any team that was really close to some of you guys, right? Yeah, I still, to this day, believe if we were at full power, we would have done really, really well at Nationals. Right. Um, and then, I guess, let's um, let's kind of get on to your agent year. I want to talk about that, because obviously, you guys got um, Jesse saying always bringing up bad memories. Um, but I guess your agent year, right? Um, obviously, a huge change within who was on your team, right? Obviously, you guys got a lot of teams, right? Cole, Xander, and Jackson Bear, right, are the three that are notable to my, in my head. Um but what was that like, um, kind of just getting those three guys um, on the team? Uh, the nice thing was that we still had the core team together, so the culture was still there. And then we had an addition of three players who just wanted to hop in the culture and wanted to win just like us, which, like, worked out perfectly. Right. And then what were what were practices like? Because obviously when you look at your team, you guys had a lot of guys who ended up playing at the next level. Um, so what were practices like there? Uh, practices were pretty fun. Uh, off off the court, we were jokes and uh, we would mess around with each other. But on the court, um, if you were on Jesse's line, we talked about Saad on that line. Um, Saad would be on everyone's case, kind of the leader. So he would be on everyone's case. That brought us together and everyone was intense at most part because our gameplay would be competitive at all times. And needed to be competitive. For sure. And then looking into kind of the, like, the provincial tournament, um, obviously, was there a sense of urgency that you guys felt like you needed to win your last year, um, like, at provincial for club? Yeah, so losing, I have a lot of silver medals from provincials. So losing those last few really meant that I need to push through and, like, we need to really win our last year. Because we kind of grew up, as, like, Jesse said, we grew up in Jesse's car. He would drive us to practices. And he taught us this culture where, Winning our last year is what matters. Right. So we basically, put everything online at provincial and nationals. Right. Um, and then, what was that tournament like? Did you, did you guys end up dropping any sets at all? Or? I believe we dropped one set on day one, and then that was it. Uh, no. the playoffs, we didn't drop a set. Right. Um, and I guess, um, like, who'd you guys play in the provincial finals? The Preds, right? Yep, the Preds. And that was a three set match? Yep. Three of them. Five. Three to five, right? Yep. And um, I guess um, when you look at that team, too, they, they had a lot of good players. Um, what did you guys kind of like, – what do you think your team did well to kind of contain those guys? What we did really well, we were a really disciplined team. Uh, just because we were big, we were on our block. Knowing that our weakness was defense, uh, we would build off our block and be able to pick the ball pretty high and then give our 
my ball. And obviously, we have big hitters everywhere, so we can take a swing at it and hopefully score. Right. And then, um, I guess, moving towards the Nationals. Um, obviously, given that you guys had a little bit of a heartbreak there um, the year before, right? Because um, I think you guys were obviously having favorites to win. Um, what did it, like... What did it feel like to kind of get that H National Championship? Was there almost like a second relief? Really good, actually. Uh, just because the last time we won Nationals was in 16 year. So you felt the, the empty championship for almost a year. Um, that was a good feeling, but we also had a weird story for our, our gold medal at Nationals. So th that was kind of hard to get through. But once we finally got it, it was a, it was a relief. And I remember having a talk after. And it was like a, a relief talk and we talk. Right. And um, I guess, um, what was game point like in the finals? I still watch the video to this day. You can still hear McAllister uh, yelling, earn the point. Yeah. It was a huge thing for us. Um, I remember once we won that point, we just all celebrated straight into the, the huddle and clapped. And it was on to something after that. Right. And then, um, I guess, because you guys played a team from out west, right? I think it was uh, Seaside? Yep, from BC. Um, and so, obviously, that team had a couple guys been playing in the university, right? University level at the time? Yeah, they do. So, um, what was that like? like? Did you find there was, like, a physicality difference there? Like, did you take time to kind of adjust to them a little bit at the start of the match? I mean, there's always this thing, because that level, you train every single day. So, obviously, you had a, a few more matches than us. But once again, you're at a level. We've spoken about this moment our entire life, and you're confident enough to, to execute and actually trust in your teammates to win. Right, and then um, I guess just looking at um, kind of like your your team with like obviously like winning with Abby and Saad, right? Especially um, there at the end, like what was that? Like that must have felt really nice then, because that was something you guys played like kind of played for the whole time, right? Like, your whole careers. Yeah, it's it's funny because we all live close to each other and we play beach together and each other. We also used to volunteer together, so we spent a lot of time together. Right. Uh, and eight year nationals was always always this topic, and like once we finally sat together, it was a sign of a relief that we finally did what we wanted to do. For sure. Yep. Um, and I guess uh, one thing I guess a lot of people don't know, and actually Monday will ask the question on here, was your transition from left side to middle. Um, I think because one thing that you and I have talked about um, was that obviously you played middle and then you wanted to switch to the outside because you thought you were too small to play middle, but um, you're kind of back in the middle now at Guelph. Um, what, is, like, kinda, what was that experience like, the transition phase? Um, I actually signed as a right side going into Guelph. Um, what happened was I played a few months at the right side and I was starting to do well. And our middle, our, our fourth year, for his ACL. And the next middle on our, on our team was me, which needs. So I started to train and I started to learn the new steps I to, to accomplish to be successful. I, I, playing middle in 16U was way different than playing middle at the OUA level. For sure. Yeah. And then um, I guess um, one thing looking at when you played um, kind of club, like you weren't really big into playing beats, right? Um, during your club time. Um, so what was it like kind of having, like, because I think now you've kind of taken more of a role in playing Beach. What has that been like? Uh, did you say how we played Beach in, in 14 years on? Yeah, well, no, because like I'm saying you didn't really play a lot of club, right? Yeah. Um, like, kind of, you can play a lot of Beach and club, uh, but now kind of after your club experience, you've been playing a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, so why do you think that is? Uh, it's honestly, Beach one is not hard on your knees. So after a long time, it's fun to still play volleyball and still compete and still be uh, playing against your friends and, and not be hurting your body at that point. So that's, that's a plus. Certainly, yeah. Um, so just kind of keeping on that beach topic, Jesse asked a question, how was your experience playing with Harvier and what was it like sharing one water bottle? Uh, you want to talk us through that tournament maybe? Yeah. Uh, we played provincials um, together. Just, just randomly, um, and it was youth open, and both of us didn't bring a water bottle. We kind of last minute on it, and we didn't bring any food either, so we were without food right. and without water. And Lauren, found, most of us know, uh, Lauren bought us one water bottle, and we shared that one water bottle. Throughout 
entire tournament. And it wasn't right. a big water bottle. It was like the size of this water bottle. So after one timeout, it would be done. It was done, yeah. And I think I remember you guys also cramped up right after the first day, I think. Yeah, we, we played our last pool play game uh, standing and we actually won. Right. We still, we still win, we talked about. That's funny. And so I guess um, on the topic of you and Parvier playing together, Parvier asked um, who would win um, in your primes? Um, you and Parvier against uh, Pratik and Kadeem. Who do you think would? Definitely me and Parvier. 21-6, 21-5. That's a bold prediction, no? Yeah, it is. It's not easy. Really? Yeah. What, what makes you think you guys would be a little bit more successful? Uh, Parvier's the GOAT, that's why. Parvier's Parvier's a goat. That's fair. I can I can live with that. Um, just looking at um, some of the questions here uh, from people, um, like, what would you what would you give it, um, like your younger self advice um, in terms of like playing? Like, what would you what would be some advice you give yourself? As a kid, you force yourself a lot to form, and you forget the actual process part, and you actually quit, and and you hope that you. You focus on that process part. You, you get older, and that process part does like if I poor recovery as a kid, or if I didn't care about scoring and I cared about my development as a kid, I come up to this age. That's something I already seen. Right, and then one another question we have here is um, I want to talk about kind of like the coaching side of things then a little bit. But um, is there maybe a player that you played with that maybe sticks out to you, uh, whether it was during club or during your time at Guelph? Uh, I played with a lot of good players. The, my team was stacked out. Um, yeah. I went to play at, at, at some, but most of them, know people like Xander, uh, that, that was my team. Cole was on my team as well. I had a lot of big names. That can name. um, a lot of players that I can name. Yeah. Um, and then I guess kind of moving to the coaching side. Um, um, recently, I think you've been spending a lot more time kind of coaching uh, more rep teams. Yep. Um, like, I know, obviously, you helped with, I think it was 13 new girls this year. Um, you helped a little bit with, um, I think, Abby's 15 new black team, right? Yep. Uh, you came out to, obviously, our 18 new team practices. Um, do you see yourself maybe coaching a club team in the future? I do. Uh, once I finish time at Guelph, I really want I, – I do believe something I can learn from, go along with as a team. And, and winning, uh, being on the coach side also feels good, too. Right. From Jesse. Yeah. And then, um, I guess, is there like a certain age group, I guess, that you prefer to coach? No, not really. Uh, 15 would be nice. I, I like high school kids because they're willing to work hard and win. And then, um, I guess, is there, um, is there maybe like a, a go-to drill that you go to during, um, during kind of your coaching clinics, per se? Uh, no, it depends on what. What we're working on that if it's for me specifically our practices are our way from what we do right yeah um and then looking at your time at guelph um this past season obviously you guys had a lot of success at the start of the season and going into the playoffs mm -hmm. um and then you're obviously you guys got matched up with a tough semi-final they're playing against um UFT. what was what was that game like in terms of um kind of having a lot of like people watching right and obviously a highly anticipated match yep uh, so coming out from like a good season and we were playing middle of the playoffs, we were pretty confident. Um, we also had a really good season coming leading up to our quarterfinals. We had a really good quarterfinals as well. Um, what helped was that we were playing in an away gym, but with comes that the final four is advertised a lot to a lot of people coming. Up. So as an athlete, you learn how to tune out a lot of the crowd and playing in a lot of away gyms, you learn how hot to be. And you just learn how to shut it off and just play. Right. Um, and would you say there was almost um, – because that was your – you guys made the semifinals the year before, right? Or did you guys lose in the quarters? We lost in the quarters in the fifth set, 21. So, so was it uh, maybe a little nerve-wracking to play in that final four? Uh, yes, but we felt like we needed to be there just because we lost last year. And we were really close. We were just two points away from being in the final four last year. It all felt like we needed to – be here. Right. And then I guess uh, moving towards that bronze medal match, um, obviously playing um, the home team McMaster, right? Um, what was it like um, kind of playing in their gym with their home advantage, obviously with fighting for a lot of nationals? 
Um, it's kind of hard always playing at someone's home. Right? Um, they bring a lot of fans out, and that pressure of going to Nationals is just there. Like whoever wins this game gets to go to Nationals. The other one season ends here, and they get to go on to their off season and just hang out. Um, it's a lot, of pressure, but performing is you just can't think about that pressure at that point. You just have to perform. Right. Um, and then. Like what? Um, what are some things that you, maybe you and your team are looking forward to next year? Uh, once again, we really think we can do really well. So, uh, everyone while they're quarantined are still working hard. Um, we're planning on to still doing really well. Uh, can't really promise anything like usual. For sure. And um, I guess, um, what would be some future goals for you in the sport? Like, do you have, um, obviously, you guys want to win the OU championship and qualify for nationals, but is there anything maybe further in the sport that you're looking to do? If pro ever turns into an option, uh, sure. But I'm taking criminal justice as well. And the plan is to become a law enforcer, whether you're an OPPR, um, that's still. Yeah, certainly. And then um, in terms of coaching, you were talking about obviously doing that um, maybe once you've done your degree. Would that be something you would do while balancing a job? Yep. And that's and then um, I guess keep on the coaching side. Um, what have been some things you've been kind of enjoying when it comes to coaching Beach? Because obviously you've helped Jesse run the program the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, most of those days were actually 12-hour days. So uh, we come together. It's actually nice to see competitive volume. Those camps throughout the day for fun. And once you get to the beach, Jesse actually lets me hop in uh, most of the time play with the kids. Right. Feeding with the kids and still keeping that competitive really well. What, what would be like a, a big takeaway you maybe learned from kind of coaching with Jesse? Um, a big takeaway would be the game from the other side. Uh, when you play, you can just center yourself into a specific goal. Um, Coaching, you realize the bigger picture, and then you once again center yourself to the end goal. And then obviously that's something that you learned from Jesse as a coach. What would be something maybe that, like a big takeaway that you would have learned from Jesse as a player? There's actually been a lot. Uh, he's, he was my coach that started off, and he, he taught me the sport. Big takeaway is uh, taking your time. Uh, a lot of times he taught us how to call timeouts and taught us all these skills, and uh, Eventually, I would say taking your time and knowing what you're doing before you have to do it. Smart about it. Right. And um, obviously, you guys had Dave um, for your 17 new age New Year's. Yep. Um, I guess um, I think everyone has so many different takeaways that you can get from him, right? Because um, obviously, Dave's, Dave's, um, Dave's pretty um, technical, right, when it comes to the coaching side of things. Uh, what would be maybe one technical skill that you would have taken away from him? Uh, I remember when I used Dave, and it was only for one year. Um, in 18 u and I would make a shot and even if I scored he would look at me and he would say why did you make that shot right I would have to explain myself and something I really took away from him is he made me think and he made me find out bigger or better solutions to the problems that we face in game right and um what so I'm I mean Jeff and I talked about it a little bit um on Wednesday just about why um, the two of them are good coaching together why do you think the two of them are Kind of good when it comes to coaching with one brother. Uh, one thing is Jesse is w one we're really close to. Um, he watched us grow up uh, last time, Gabby and Sod. Um, so we all we had this bond already, and then Alistair, we actually used to play against them in high school ball. Right. Uh, so we used to we used to talk to him and just play with him, and he took us to showcase when I was in So I had a little bit of exposure to him. I came in 18 U, and I saw. He had a hard shell, but once you know him, he's actually a really nice guy. For sure. He ultimately has the best. Great. And um, I guess um, we've talked a little bit about you giving me advice for my HNU season. Uh, what would you give advice for maybe the um, HNU athletes that have Jesse and Dave next year? Uh, soak up as much information as you can. Um, you'll learn really fast that you're young. You can learn a lot more. To get older, learn things and learning new skills. It's really hard. So once you're an eighth, give it your all. Try your hardest. 
and then soak up as much as can. For sure. Thank you so much for coming on. That was awesome. Yep, yeah, no worries. Um, and best of luck next year. Um, I guess I'm playing against you, so that'll be fun. Yeah. But yeah, we'll talk soon. See ya. You're doing great yeah. with us. Thanks, man. All right. See ya. See ya. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Um, we'll be back next week, Wednesday, uh, where we'll be interviewing Saad Sheikh.